Welcome to Harrisville, a 19th century paper mill town deep in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. Come with me to explore this window into the past. I'm Barbara Solm Stoll, and I'll be your guide for this podcast tour of Harrisville. I hope you have the map that accompanies this tour so you can follow our route. The map also shows you where to park at Harrisville Pond off of Route 679. We ask you to park only there because it is safe and will avoid damaging native, often rare plants or blocking the sand roads in the area. Looking around us today, it's hard to believe that in Harrisville's heyday, this company town was in the center of an industrial landscape. The company towns of Martha, Speedwell, Atsine, Hampton, and Batstow, which surround Harrisville, were based on their highly productive bog iron furnaces. These towns relied on the natural resources of the Pine Barrens for wood, bog iron ore, food, and water power. In those days, most of the forests we find today have been cut over multiple times, only to recover after local industries and their workers abandoned the region for new frontiers. The ruins of Harrisville tell one of the many stories of the Pine Barrens where our ancestors lived off the land. In time, most left in search of fresh resources elsewhere, and their abandoned towns were left for nature to gradually obscure, but never wholly erase the traces of their presence here. Sites like Harrisville are fragile and easily damaged or lost unless visitors like us are careful. Please stay outside the fence around the paper mill ruins and do not climb on any of the other ruins. Please leave everything in place just as you found it. The town of McCartyville, later known as Harrisville, was established in 1834 when a Philadelphia bookseller named William McCarty erected a paper mill here. McCarty also built a sawmill, grist mill, blacksmith and carpenter shops, a boarding house, a home for himself, tenant homes for the workers, a company store, and later a school that served as a church on Sundays. At two and a half stories, 313 feet in length, and 65 feet wide, the paper mill was large. We're looking at the west wall of the main mill. The mill's main product was butcher paper. The plant produced about a ton of paper a day, as well as making binder boards, the cardboard backing for book jackets, and bonnet boards for the visors or rims of bonnets. After McCarty's mill was badly damaged by fire in 1846, he abandoned the town and moved back to Philadelphia. In 1851, Richard Harris and his brother William, two young, well-to-do, prominent Philadelphians, bought the town and paper mill. After taking possession, the Harris brothers enlarged the plant and modernized the papermaking process. They also changed the name of the town to Harissa and later Harrisville. For years, products of the paper mill were taken by wagon to the landing several miles out of town and barged down the wading river to where it met the Mullica River and widened. There, schooners picked up the products and sailed them to the markets of New York and Philadelphia. In 1866, in an attempt to find iron-free water that would not rust out the iron-wrought boilers used in the papermaking process, an artesian well was dug. At one point during the drilling, iron-free water flowed, but the driller wasn't satisfied and continued to dig further. Unfortunately, the result of further drilling was a low-volume flow of water impregnated with iron. The well was abandoned, but continues to this day to bring forth iron-rich water. Turning away from the paper mill ruins, we will walk down what was once South Main Street and is now a sand road. Here on South Main Street stood a boarding home where the single men who worked at the plant could reside. Residents could set aside a portion of their paychecks to pay for home-cooked meals. At its height, the town was home to 75 souls. Each worker at the plant was entitled to the use of a free tenant house and one acre of ground to raise corn, potatoes, beans, and other staples. In their front yards were fruit trees apple, pear, wild cherry, and peach. There was an abundance of wild strawberries, raspberries, grapes, and huckleberries growing throughout the village. Remains of 10 of the tenant houses are still visible, five on each side of the South Main Street. 
the tenant houses were made of wood with a Jersey sandstone foundation. Most contained four rooms and a half cellar. Commonly, the houses consisted of a front room on the first level with a lean-to kitchen in the rear and two bedrooms upstairs. There was no indoor plumbing. Privies were located in the back of the house and pitcher pumps or brick-lined wells provided an ample source of fresh water for drinking and bathing. A major improvement undertaken in 1875 made Harrisville the talk of the Pine Barrens. A gas generator was installed and ornamental gas lanterns were erected on the main street. Gas lighting was installed in parts of the paper mill and the Harris Brothers Mansion. This was a remarkable innovation at the time. Walk back up the road to Route 679 and carefully cross the highway to the east side as shown on the tour map. Now walk up the sand road towards Martha to where you find the canal on your left. The paper mill needed significant water power to run the mill's seven turbines, which operated all the machinery in the plant. So a long, three-sided rectangular canal was built to divert water from Harrisville Pond. The canal was dug by hand. Workers were paid three cents per cubic foot for the work. It was seven feet deep to increase force of water and 30 feet wide. The canal was lined with sandstone to prevent water from seeping into the ground. Now let's walk to North Main Street and find the overgrown cellar that marks the site of the Howard Harris Mansion. The Harris brothers built themselves mansions, dwarfing the town's other dwellings. This was the site of the Howard Harris Mansion, where Richard, a lifelong bachelor, lived with his younger brother Howard and his family. It was large and quite lavish, had 15 rooms and the modern amenities of indoor plumbing and gas lighting. Walking a little further north along what was once North Main Street, we will find the ruins of the company store and post office. The company store and post office was the heart of the community. The store sold groceries, hardware, clothing, animal feed, pretty much everything Harrisville's residents needed to live. As the only store in an isolated town, the company store made a profit of $3,000 in 1837, the same year the paper mill made a profit of $10,000. We reached the site of the town's grist mill by crossing Main Street and heading west as shown on the map. The grist mill was where cornmeal, flour, and feed were ground. Note the catawpa trees, grapevines, and other non-indigenous plants we still find in the village. When you come across these non-native plantings in the Pine Barrens forest, it is a sure sign of past human habitation. Returning to where you parked, you will see two dams and spillways that make Harrisville Pond. The Oswego River, a branch of the Wading River system, was first dammed in 1760 by Evie Valangi for a sawmill the dam created Harrisville Pond. Harrisville prospered throughout the 1860s, but the 1870s brought hard times. The mill could not compete because it did not produce a sufficient range or diversity of product. Its location was far from the mainstream and the equipment was getting old. Other, more modern paper mills were able to produce a larger variety and better grades of paper. After defaulting on a loan in the late 1880s, the Harrisville plant went into foreclosure and was sold at sheriff's sale in 1891. The property changed hands several times until Joseph Wharton bought it in 1896. Wharton had no plans to restart the papermaking operation, but had instead acquired over 100,000 acres in order to pump its pure Pine Barrens water to replace Philadelphia's increasingly polluted water supplies but the New Jersey legislature got wind of this scheme and passed a bill that outlawed the exporting of water from the state. That law is still in place today. In 1914, a mysterious fire raged through the town, destroying the paper mill and all of the other town buildings. In 1954, the state of New Jersey bought Harrisville as part of the Wharton Tract, and it is now a part of Wharton State Forest. Historic places like the lost town of Harrisville provide us with a tangible link to our past. These places help us appreciate and understand our relationship with the landscape and natural resources in which we live, 
work, and play. Your support for saving these irreplaceable resources is vitally important. Contact us at Wharton State Forest if you'd like to become a volunteer. Please join Wharton State Forest and the Pinelands Preservation Alliance in preserving sites like Harrisville and telling our fellow citizens about the need to save these treasures of our past.